you know, there's a lot of concern of what's going to happen this year, but, um, you know, we can participate. We can be radically inclusive. We can experience immediacy. We can gift. We can demonstrate communal effort and civic responsibility with or without Black Rock City. We can do it right now, um, especially in this time where, you know, our, our principles, our values are really, really needed. And when I think about my theme camp previously and all of your camps, um, this much I know to be true. Camps know how to come together in times of uncertainty. Uh, you know, a dust storm blowing away our half-built shade structure and poles flying up everywhere. Or for me, another time when we split our camp a little bit too thin, we were doing an art installation and our theme camp, and we weren't even sure if that art installation was going to get finished. Like, uncertainty galore. I'm sure you all have your stories, too, of the times that you, that you face down together. Um, and camps are camps, you know, quote camps when we're together in Black Rock City, but camps are camps and they're also communities and our communities really know how to rally when things get hard and how to come together. So along those lines, today we've pivoted a lot of our content for the symposium and in the last couple of days we put together this panel for you that's up next um, for what's top of mind for all of us. Uh, the panel is titled Camps in a Time of Social Distancing. Um, we've pulled together an awesome group, so I'm really thrilled to hand things over to the panel's moderator, which is Halcyon of Pink Heart. So take it away, Halcyon. That's Sandor. We'll get Halcyon in a second. <laughs> Hey, all right. Welcome to the first panel of the day. My name is Halcyon. I am co-founder of Pink Heart. And uh, I am so honored and thrilled to be here today. Uh, I Hopefully you're going to be able to see gallery mode and see our other panelists. Uh, before I introduce them, uh, we are going to have a few words to say and then we're going to have an answering questions uh, just like Marion did. So feel free to start asking questions or 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 whatever is on your mind for the panelists today. Uh, also, uh, we because of the nature of this digital means uh, and the, 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 the camera angles, shirt cocking is totally acceptable. We just ask that you put a towel down if you're going to sit on anyone's cooler. That's not a COVID-19 thing. That's just general appropriate playa etiquette. Um, so this panel was originally going to be called uh, What's Really Ruining Burning Man? Kind of a nod to how every year there is uh, something that is going to be the that brings us down, whether it be rap guys or Instagrammers. But this year, uh, bug apocalypse, hold my beer. Um, so how do we create uh, communities when we can't commune? I think this is like the most gnarly metaphorical windstorm that we have had to uh, deal with and in my 22 years. And the question comes of, you know, as theme camps, do we hunker down and weather the storm or do we find a way to set our sails and uh, thrive and spread the principles in different ways and expand and, and evolve like we always have as a resilient community. Luckily, we've got awesome people, uh, panelists today to help answer these questions and uh, talk about what theme camp is in a world of social isolation. So I first want to introduce, see if we can make this work. Uh, let's see, you know what? I was gonna just pass the, this, the, uh, this around. We've got, we've got Sean, hey, Sean here. It's Sean from Casbah. Awesome. All right, we've got uh, Nikki from Big Imagination. Is she here? Yeah, I've got it. Thank you. Got it. Oh, awesome. All right. Yeah. All right, and then you want to pass that once you take it to to Harley, who is our uh, Burning Man cultural founder. Stoked to have you here, Harley. Oh, good. I'm so glad I have this. I was running low on this. Thank you. Here, I'm going to pass this to 
Who do I pass this to? Pass it to Caveat if he's around. Caveat, this is for you. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. I was just looking for that. To, and uh, how soon do you need this back? You know what? I'm pretty dirty. Uh, I better take it back. Yeah, okay. Here. Is Sandor going to join us? If I'm here. Yes, please. Okay, please. well then definitely clean that guy up. Can you Sorry take about that. Here you go, man. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, let me just uh, jump into it. Uh, Nikki, what does it mean um, to take a year off? A lot of camps are thinking about that. What does it mean to take a year off uh, in a socially distanced world? Uh, yeah, great question, Halcyon. Um, uh, it means that uh, for us, it's meaning that we're not actually going to collectively go to the playa as a placed theme camp. But it doesn't mean, well, it seems to not have meant that we would be less active, I think. This is what I mentioned to you yesterday, is that we seem to be the most active maybe that we've ever been um, online, uh, meeting in person in different cities, connecting with each other. And then obviously with the current situation, jumping in to distribute resources with other camps as we can. So for us, it's been meeting online every evening. We have a happy hour virtually and chatting on our threads. We have three or four WhatsApp threads that we connect on. So what have the uh, online gatherings been like? Well, they've been pretty good. Um, turns out taking a year off might mean having a year on. Um, some of them are really social because we know that it's happening every evening. So last night I went for a run, I hopped online, friends were from our camp were on in LA and San Francisco. Um, some people were cooking, some people were having drinks and no matter where in the world we are, we can hop on and socialize. And then also we've had more um, sort of structured panels. So one of our camp members, um, who's an economist, jumped on and did a Q&A for a group of us and kind of explained what the economic situation would be like and was offering aid to the rest of us. Oh, there's another Nikki Finnamore. Nice. Thank you. Um, so, Sean, what... Uh, how does the, the shift in the world change the role of the world? Well, I mean, it's this is what we were trained for in a lot of ways, um, on obviously a, a micro scale. But I always I always call Burning Man like high altitude training, and uh, you know I think as organizers of communities, we have uh, a growing responsibility to to make it a little bit more than the music and the party and the, the event and, and, and that exact time. I think uh, the more you're, you grow your communities, the more responsibility you have um, and moral obligation, um, more or less, to really try to, you know, lead by example um, and, and try, to, try to create, um, you know, bring your, bring your energy, bring your positivity, bring your community and, and try to try to force the hand a little bit to try to inspire and encourage people to, to, to go a little bit further and to keep what they feel at Burning Man alive and well outside of Burning Man. And I think uh, as, as an organizer, um, it's important right now more than ever that we kind of bring all the, all of the, everything we've, we've learned from the playa over the years and, and, and kind of bring that confidence to the world where we can and really try to bring people together um, and, and rally for, for ways we can help and, 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 and talk to one another, so. Cool, so uh, Harley, speaking of uh, bringing things to the world, and one thing that uh, we talk about is how Black Rock City gives us an opportunity to have these non-transactional living. Is that something that uh, we can port to the current world? Oh, absolutely. Um, something I've been thinking a lot about is uh, how we create transformational experiences for others. We're all experts in that, right? There's four things that help make a transformational experience that I have determined. So take me with a grain of salt and poke holes in it. But what I think is that, first of all, we get, take people out of their comfort zone. We make it, it's hard for them psychologically, physically. It's hard. You're not comfortable. Second thing we do is we give people meaningful work to do. That's not the work you get paid for. It's the stuff you're passionate about, the stuff that fills you up. It makes you a better person. It makes the world a better place. The third thing we do is we bring ritual and ceremony. We bring people an opportunity to like gather and understand where they fit in the context of the greater whole. And the fourth thing we do is give people a safe place to explore themselves, to see who they are. 
And that's where transactional experiences come in. There's three ways that that's sort of eroding and it brings up the largest problems that we have in the playa. The first one is the use of technology. With, with the use of technology, you're sort of distancing yourself from other people. So you're not present. And that's, that's not cool at Burning Man. Or it's not cool to be on your phone. It's not cool to be on your email. Um, the second one is social media. When you have social media, you're self-conscious. Without any social media, you can just be free. You can just be yourself. You're not worried. And the third one is transactional exchanges. That's the world we live in, right? We do, All day long, I'm giving this to get that. I'm talking to this person so they'll like me, so they'll think I'm an okay person because they live in my neighborhood, and I want them to, to trust me. Um, those transactional exchanges are embedded in everything we do, and we create a safe space of Burning Man where you don't have to worry about all that stuff. You can just be you, and people want to judge you. They can't judge you. You're not wearing the right clothes that you're supposed to get judged in, right? So when we're not there anymore and we're dropped back into that transactional world we live in all the time, how do we bring all this other stuff we're expert at? Creating ritual and ceremony, mm -hmm. giving people um, a place to explore themselves, um, all that generosity we've learned to share. How do we do that here in this particular moment? That's the question of the day for me. That is... Uh so exciting because I think that one of the things that uh, I think a lot of people that are tuned in right now are probably people that are pretty all in on 10 principles in our culture and people who leave Black Rock City or leave their regional and then they are you know continuing to push uh, the, the principles the lifestyle into their world the default world but there's a lot of people I think that that leave the city and then hit the the decompression blues and they they feel that kind of barrier of the default world is giving us pressure, that judgment, all the stuff that is, is pushing us back into the status quo. But right now, the status quo is blown apart. There's, I mean, everyone's in their pajamas anyways. It might as well wear a onesie. So um, let's see. Uh, moving on to caveat. Do you think this shift in our global culture is going to affect the evolution of the Burning Man culture? Well, in, in absolutely, in some ways, I mean, obviously, it is a very disruptive event, both physically and culturally. I mean, we're having this theme camp symposium this way because there's there's been a massive disruption. But what I think is happening is that this is a painful, traumatic event that is actually pushing us in the same direction we were going anyway. It's it's a forced break that is pushing us towards what we were we were already moving in the direction we were already moving. I mean, if, if you look at the evolution of Burning Man itself, I mean, you, you saw it begin as this experiment where, you know, two families said, hey, can we build and burn a wooden man on a beach? Sure. And back then you, you had to either really be lucky to stumble into it or you had to know somebody and it was happening at a specific place and time. And then it moved to the desert and it got bigger and more people got involved, but it was still, you know, sort of this limit, this limited group of people. It was very much a scene. And then it became a cultural movement and then a global cultural movement. And then it's entered into what I call our high culture phase. And in all of that, it is Burning Man as a thing, not just an event in the desert, but has become increasingly decentralized, increasingly engaged with these extended networks that have become robust and they have become very unique and, and in some ways global and in some ways more local. You know, uh, the, the, the Burning Man community differs wherever it is. It, it reflects, you know, local influences and the people there. It's not cookie cutter at all. And it's, it's gotten more and more collaborative, more distributed. And theme camps have been basically following that same trajectory. Um, they have been on their own without anybody pushing it, without a major global crisis happening. Many of them have moved from being this group of friends who said, hey, let's, uh, you know, let's just do the thing and, and we're only gonna do it in Black Rock City to, okay, well, we're gonna do it in Black Rock City, but we're also gonna do it in our, in our, our regional. And then, hey, we also want to do a thing. We want to do local fundraisers. And oh, and we have friends, you know, from all around the world now who want to participate. Well, sure. How do we keep them connected? And then, you know, what charitable projects can we do? That, that was happening on its own. And what's happened now is that we're just forced directly into that evolution, that distributed, decentralized, how do we do what we do outside of mm. these specific events and places? And it's it's incredibly painful in part because 
these technological tools that we're using right now are in, in many ways considered tools of last resort for us. You know, culturally, we like to be directly present with one another in part because when you do things over technology, and this is what Harley was, was getting at, you tend, to folk, you tend to connect with the technology as much or more than you'd connect with the people. And so now, but now these tools of last resort are the only tools we have. That's what we have to use for right now. And so we, we have to find ways to, um, to connect, to use the technology to connect more directly with one another. And that's, that's a challenge in front of us, but it's not taking us any place we weren't going already. Yeah, like Instagram was a problem on the playa, right? But now Instagram's our friend. No, exactly. Um, it's how it's not you know it's not how do we say how do we say no, but how do we take where we actually are and find ways to make that authentically connecting and engaging and be with one another in a in a form of immediacy and radical self expression. Yeah. I, I feel like in in the early days of uh, internet, I was a big evangelist for things like webcams and connecting us, it has all this potential. And then we discovered that uh, the internet was a tool to sell things and it got less fun and cool, um, or at least for the artists and people pushing cultural limits and stuff. And I feel like now it's coming around and we're rediscovering the potential of these tools. The digital tool is definitely something that it's like fire. It can be super powerful and super dangerous and we're having to harness it in new ways. Well, I think, I think it's not an accident that so much of what we think of when we think of video conferencing and the internet these days is because it became a medium, as you say, for, for commerce and business. Video conferencing is a, is a business tool. But what if we thought of it first and foremost as an artistic tool? What if we were using it not as consumers, not as businesses, but, but as artists, as, as creators? What if we were to reimagine that from the ground up? What could we do? Sandor, uh, what uh, changes are you seeing in, uh, in, in theme camps? Well, you know, um, our camp is from Houston, and our camp actually had its first year, the, the year Hurricane Harvey hit uh, in Houston, and our camp was heavily impacted by that hurricane. And it really opened our eyes uh, to things like Burns Without Borders and thinking about how do we get out into our community and, and have more of an impact beyond just going to Burning Man, beyond just gathering and working on projects. And so our camp, uh, it's a continuation of that process that started those years ago. And we're thinking a lot about well, what can we do with the knowledge that we've gained from Burning Man, the materials that we've collected, masks and gloves and things of that nature and, and have some sort of impact in our community. So um, question for Harley from the chat. Uh, what does our community stretching right now look like to you in terms of activation in a time of COVID-19? You know, that's a, that is the question of the hour. I, I don't have a good answer to that. Um, I just think it's really interesting that the largest questions we had on the playa have now been flipped totally on their head, like um, transactional exchanges in the context of money. It's not okay to pay someone to do something in your camp, right? Like. That, <clears throat> Actually, there's a whole continuum. When is it okay? When is it okay? Is it ever? And, and if so, in what context? Big important question we have. But now, when you go out of the house and go to the grocery store for your transactional exchange of something you really need, like groceries, that might be the only person you see in the flesh for a day, for a week. So like that question of, of what what, what, what's, what do we need to fix to culturally recorrect on the playa is now kind of exactly the opposite. And I think that's where the energy is. That's where the exploration is. That's where um, the discovery is. And, and we're the creators. We're the people up for the task. We've got those other three. We know how to bring, um, you know, take people that are uncomfortable and, and make it be okay. We know how to um, give people meaningful, we know what meaningful work is. I'm going back to the things I talked about earlier. We know how to bring ritual and ceremony. Now, how do we take these problem areas and how do we make, what, where's the beauty in them? Where's the good? Where's the innovation? And that's where the creativity comes in. So I can't really answer that question, but I'm really curious to hear what this community does with it. I think that's one of the, the where there's, there's these kind of high level things that we are been training for as burners. You know, we we know how to deal with must, uh, dust masks and such, but there's also the, the general philosophy and, and idea of 
looking for gifting opportunities, looking for places where we can make a situation better, whether it's a long line in a bathroom, so we start to entertain them, you know, or whatever that is. And so I think that one of our challenges is gonna be, what are the places that we can find cracks that could be filled in, places that we could elevate things? I, I decided, I, I've been out on my porch with this sign as my neighbors have been uh, uh, walking by, trying to find some way to bring a little burner vibe in a way that we can't. So I, I, we're looking to the community to, to, to inspire each other. Well, I think also you were telling me about you holding your on, different online meetings now, and they're, they're sort of like your own online theme camp you've started and you're doing different kinds of activities. That's really interesting to me. I think that there's, I mean, that's happening a lot of that. I think a lot of theme camps are doing it uh, individually. And I think that there's also a lot of groups that have not traditionally been theme camps that I think in the, 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 the venue of these online gatherings start to have a little bit of a theme camp type uh, relationship. The thing I think is gonna be interesting is um, collectively we often get together as theme camps with a gift that we all do together. And if it's not a gift that we do for Black Rock City, what is something that we can collectively come together to do together? And I think that's gonna be one of our challenges. I think one of the, the other aspects that, uh, that we have to, to face as we think of this as sort of a design challenge for experiences is, is how, do we, how do we take risks? Um, it's interesting, when we did the iRobot uh, theme series, one of the things that uh, the, we, we talked a lot about, you know, mediation and connecting through, uh, through technology. And some of the researchers said that one of the things that the technology did was it took all the risks and the awkwardness out of interaction. That's what it was, you know, designed for. That's how it was used. And that took much of our humanity away. That in order to connect, we have to find ways to be awkward around each other, to to say something that you know is is perhaps personal and and risky or engaging, to put ourselves out there. And so, and a lot of that is on the one hand, Black Rock City, Burning Man spaces are, I don't think of them as safe spaces, but I think of them as we take our risks and we lubricate them. We make it very easy to do. We recover from them. How do we bring that same spirit to these technology encounters? How do we find ways to to make these tools that are in, designed fairly often to, to minimize that, that human awkwardness, make it easy to just, you know, skate along. How do, how do we make these risky encounters again in that, in that really productive way? And, and I think it can be done, but I think that's, that's part of the challenge. I think that's a great, yeah, I'm going to jump in there. I think that's a great question because immediately, like we're all sitting in our homes. So suddenly we have for the first time, 800 people sitting with us in our personal environments. So we were immediately, like we're jumping through that facade um, that, you know, we're able to create if we were all sitting together in San Francisco in a room, you're suddenly in my personal space and I'm in yours, which is an immediate like movement into that lubrication, I think, and taking the context of Burning Man or our current context and taking those principles from Burning Man and bringing them into the current context and being able to sort of springboard away from uh, pleasantries and small talk into a really personal space and then being willing to be yourself within that space as well. So I think using the, using the technology that we have and reframing the context in which we use it is really, is really interesting. And in direct response to the question, you know, the COVID, 19 part of it, there's of course the work that Burners Without Borders is doing, right? And they're, they're helping to really um, have our community crowdsource those medical supplies that our, you know, physicians and health workers need right now. What a beautiful thing to do. So we're looking to continue that message and do that kind of support. And there's a lot of things bringing up like that one. That to me is like a really easy one. The more challenging questions, the kind of stuff we're grappling with here, like what is the change going to be? What is the growth and development going to be moving forward? There's actually two calls to action from Burners Without Borders for us, one uh, relating to uh, PPEs, personal protective equipment. Uh, one, collect your extra PPEs from your playa bins and donate them to communities in need. There's information on the Burners Without Borders website. And then volunteering to become a distribution and delivery person uh, to getting the, those materials to um, major uh, city areas. Uh, speaking of uh, service beyond your theme camp. Um, I know that uh, Sean was talking about trying to do fundraising. Is How is fundraising uh, affected by all these changes? I mean, our year just got flipped like upside down and backwards, you know. Uh, we had a lot of really 
a big goal is to really keep spreading the, the, the energy and, and helping us fundraise for, our, we very much rely on our fundraisers throughout the year and then our camp dues to pull it all off um, and typically go a lot beyond that as well, financially um, on Playa. But, uh, you know, we just gotta really think outside the box. We actually just did our first live stream last night, kind of testing systems and we had a direct donation link there for to go straight to first responders uh, for uh, PPE gear. And we're even in a unique position to potentially acquire quite a few shelters as um, additional relief space for all these hospitals. I mean, California alone, they need 50,000 more beds, uh, it's looking. So, you know, we're just trying to at least lay the groundwork and try to stay, start now and, and just um, make these, start these conversations with the right people. And it, hopefully if we were called on, we, uh, we would be able to spring into action, you know? I mean, and it's just a really interesting time in general, uh, you know, because before Corona, the world was really kind of feeling like it was designed to separate us, especially coming from our own government. And uh, now through this global pandemic, we're really in a crazy uh, position where all of the world feels how much we're all actually in this together. So there's something, there's something there, you know, and I really think it's important that we all um, come together and, and, and really think about how delicate uh, this, this big shift is that's happening. And uh, a lot of us have already felt it coming and now it's here. Um, and it's gonna be, we really are gonna have to utilize technology and, and think of ways we can pull together our communities and try to make sure we can um, visualize how we want this future to look. Uh, it's pretty clear that our current, our current trajectory is not uh, something that, uh, that Mother Earth is gonna sustain for us. So it's, you know, this is like, this whole situation is a, a huge, a huge wake up call, hopefully for the world and in a weird way, hopefully it brings a lot of people together, but it's important for communities as large as, Bur as, as Burning Man to, to really think about how big of a moment this is in our lives and to, uh, you know, fundraising like aside, we need to, for, our, for the camps, we're, we're definitely in a position, we're trying to minimize all costs and put all focus right now on ways we can help with this crisis, you know, um, we're, our debts and stuff are, are just got totally sidelined for, and even with planning for the, the burn, we're really trying to pull way back and trying to focus our platform to help uh, first responders. And of course it might be pretty small um, when you consider the amounts, the millions and millions, hundreds of millions of things that are needed for um, our own first responders. But um, I think it's just, again, leading by example and really trying to uh, create some momentum. And, and Burning Man's huge, and, and, we ha and it's a really unique uh, situation where everyone from the world is more or less represented in, in, in some ways. So well, I think uh, that, that yeah. camaraderie is, uh, is, is a huge one. Having, like, going back to what Harley said about, you know, one of the things that we have in Black Rock City is, is uh, the the, the shared adversity or the, I can't remember how you said it, but you're like, we have a camaraderie that happens when, you know, after the first dust storm of the week, that's like when I feel like the community is family. Once we're all dirty together. And I feel like- equalizer, dust storm. Yeah, and, 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 and we have this global dust storm that's happening right now that is, is helping, I think the default world rapidly feel pieces of that camaraderie. And I think that, that the theme camp experience can be the role models of, of our micro communities to, to keep pushing that, um, that camaraderie. I think it's not just camaraderie, Halcyon, though certainly it's that we're, we're reaching out to each other. I mean, there's a natural response to a time of isolation, which is a, a desperation to reach out to one another, to, to connect how, however we can. And that, that is in so many ways what Burning Man as a culture has done. There's a reason why, you know, we say welcome home when 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 you come in, in the gate. But I think everyone is is sharing, you know, in a in a feeling of need for connection that they normally would not acknowledge, even if they've even if they've had it all this time. Well, and one one thing that we've noticed is that, you know, we have a real ethos built around radical self-reliance. Um, but in this case, in what's going on now, we're finding a need to to probe a little bit more. Uh, and people that maybe don't want to ask for help or need help, but 
uh, they're trying to do it on their own, but man, they could really use a, a call or they could use, uh, you know, uh, someone dropping some things off at their door. And so we're, we're trying to, to live within the principles, but also adapt them a bit uh, as, you know, as things have changed so much. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, adopt, the, the adapting. Um, you know, the 10 principles are used differently in different communities. Mm -hmm. You know, in Africa, burn, leave no trace is taking jobs away from people that that's their only income, right? And so it means something different there, all of, all of our different communities. And so what, what are the differences going to be here? And how are they going to bring a global community together? And, and how will they culturally be different? It's just an amazingly interesting time period where we have the opportunity to be sculptors, you know, crafters, the makers that make the change right now. And not even so much me, and like in my position, but, but the artists and, and the, the people that are leading these, the, the, these theme camps and the, the people who are out there in the creative forefront. This is, this is our heyday. This is our milieu. This is, it's going to be so interesting to look back a year from now and see what happened. Uh, we've just got a, a few more minutes. If you want to sh uh, shovel into uh, as a question or a comment, anything that your camp is doing that is an example of, of creatively coming together as a theme camp with an event, uh, collaborative art or something like that, it'd be fun to see what people are doing. We can inspire each other. Uh, I've got a question uh, years ago. This is from, oh, uh, Epiphany. Uh, years ago, I created me, Halcyon, I created a burner social network. Um, do, you, do I think that a new network is needed now for all of us to connect on and collaborate in this time uh, to help us all figure out how we can help. Yes, I think that right now we're really seeing what is missing in our existing sy systems. And uh, this is, I mean, that I think that's the one way that the our artistic and creative uh, spirits is gonna be expressed is what's the tools that we can use and or how can we leverage existing tools? How can we put tools together? That's what we always do, right? Take junk and make it awesome and take things and use them in different ways. And I think that that's gonna be our challenge short term and long term. Anyone on our panel want to give a, a few closing words of uh, what we should be doing right now? Can I ask that um, that we do that? Thank you. That's a great suggestion. Can we ask that we also give an introduction as to who we are? Because we we've got to do that in the beginning. Yes, please. <laughs> Can you start? Okay. What was the question again? <laughs> uh, who are you? And. Uh, and uh, what should we uh, what should we be doing next? Okay, so um, I'm Harley, and I'm one of the um, cultural founders. I created Placement, so my this is near and dear to my heart. This whole process right here this is such a great evolution. And I ran Black Rock City, um, all the departments except for DPW and Art for over ten years. Um, and what should we be doing right now? Um, I, I well, I think we should be taking the baby steps we're taking. And we should be really looking at them for what's, what, what's the innovation there and what worked and what didn't and what should we do more of and what, and what is not so that maybe that important. Um, because the, those, the, the moments right here at the beginning will grow into amazing plants and flowers if we notice them. But if we don't notice them, they could just get unwatered and die. Thank you. Sandor, who are you? Uh, sure. So I'm Sandor. I'm the uh, Think Camp organizer for Hoopla. We provide breakfast tacos every morning. Uh, I'm also the co-lead of a camp, uh, which is one of the programs that we'll be talking more about today. And then finally, I'm very involved in the Houston Burner community. And the things that, uh, you know, I, we're obviously very focused on in our camp and our community is taking care of each other uh, and not losing sight of trying to do big and beautiful things. You know, maybe we can't get together and work on a new art car, something that we had hoped to do this year, a new Newton vehicle. Uh, but what we can do is um, we can start planning for next year. Uh, or, you know, we can start doing things remotely uh, and, and working on projects at home that at some point we're going to have a chance to put together. So we're trying to do the same big and beautiful things that, that we always do, but adapt to what's going on now. Thank you. Sean. So there we go. Uh, hey, I'm Sean. I am co-founder of the CASBA and we are, um, you know, just trying to think outside the box right now. Uh, we've learned to do that quite well on Playa and uh, try to get around situations as best as we can. 
Um, some of the things we are planning to do is um, our live streams and uh, we're also trying to create space within the live stream setup. Uh, we built a small version of our pyramid and we're gonna be able to still feature some music there and try to um, create donations again with that and also have other cameras to show different artists and stuff. And then I even set it up so we can have visual content creators coming in and basically do projection mapping and stuff on the pyramid. So just try to create, I mean, the CASP is always supposed, to, it's always was designed to be a platform for people to really uh, showcase like their own design or their own music and their, their own things within the camp. So. Uh, we're just trying to kind of continue that and create that platform for people to have a place to still express what, uh, during this time when we're all kind of locked away. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the basics of what we're trying to do right now. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki, and I am with Big Imagination, Fan 747. Uh, we bring or have bought that giant Boeing 747 to the playa. Uh, what should we be doing? Um, start where you are. Uh, use what you have. So um, we do not have the plane anymore, but we do have a lot of tools. We use the ICS system on and off playa to scale up and down, and we have an amazing network. So we have been using that during COVID to connect people um, through our camp to resources. Um, other camps have actually got in touch with us with resources they have, like ventilators and PPE equipment. And we've been distributing those through our network, throughout the New York system. And we have camp members trolling other sites and other forums, and then bringing them into our centralized forum where we do distribution. This is just how we run our camp. So start where you are, use what you have, um, whether it's skills or tools or networks, and then do what you can. So uh, we're on our threads every single day. Um, our camp mission is to be there for ourselves, self-care, to be there for each other, and then to be there for everyone else. Um, so yeah, that's my two cents. Beautiful. Caveat. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Caveat. I uh, have, uh, I was a founding member of the Burning Man Philosophical Center, and I write for the Burning Man Journal, and I'm the author of The Scene That Became Cities, what Burning Man philosophy can teach us about building better communities, which I was not going to. Thank you, Elsie. Um, yeah, put that down. It's, um, I guess my final thoughts would be, first of all, a big plus one to what everyone has just said, especially what uh, what, what Nikki just said. Um, my my first thing that I think we are called on to do in this moment is to is to be honest. Um, let's let's not pretend that this isn't a crisis. Let's not pretend that, you know, we are, we are doing fine when we're not, that we are happy when we're not. Let's, I, I think immediacy very much calls on us to be honest about where we are and what we are experiencing in this moment. And that's where everything has to start. Um, I think the next thing we're called upon to do is, is what we were talking about earlier is take risks. Um, this is, this is a time to experiment, to, to try new things with the tools that we do have to, to ask ourselves, okay, what, what can we do in a way that would make this a human connection that would, that would be a way of, of reaching out that I normally don't do that would inspire someone else to connection. I think this, this is very much a time for risks and experimentation and, trying to use these tools as artists do rather than as business models expect us to use them. Uh, I think in that vein, um, try to make everything that we do a theme, an interactive theme camp experience. Um, we have decades worth of experience creating spaces in which people come in and have weird and bizarre interactive experiences. That's what we're called on to do now. That is what we are. That is what we need to create in order to take these risks to preserve our sense of humanity and connection in in this time of crisis. And my personal thought is that we don't want to do this to try to just recreate what it is that we have lost in this moment. I think both because I'm not at all convinced that we can do that. I mean, your your mileage may vary, and whatever whatever brings you joy and connection, great, do that. But for me. I find virtual dance parties to be insufficient for what I was, what I would get out of dancing with people. I find 
when a bunch of my friends just say, hey, let's all get together and, and have drinks. It, it doesn't bring me the same joy that getting together with people and having drinks do, but that when we use these tools, not to try to imitate what we've lost, but to find ways in which we can connect in new ways over, you know, by being in each other's living rooms, by having this, this directed time, by using the digital environment and take risks and be, be awkward and creative. And then, then, then it, is, it is good for the soul. It does feel like Burning Man. And that is one of the things that is helping me to get through. And so I think that is, that is one of the things I would urge people to, to experiment with and to, to try. That is the call, I think, that we are in part called upon to, to live up to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to thank uh, Level and Trippy and everyone who has been working to make this organized and changing gears at the last minute. I want to thank the panelists here for all your good ideas and everybody who showed up and is taking all of this uh, with, with a grain of dust. Um, we go to these places and we follow the 10 principles and in the support of these communities, we find our best selves. And we have this, this kind of Petri dish where we've been practicing, practicing, practicing. And the Petri dish has now become the entire world. And we are being called to be our best selves, our most loving, our most gifting, our most open-hearted, our creative. We've learned how to do it. Now is the time we can do it and really put the Burning Man culture into the world as is our, in our mission. So thank you for joining us. It's been an honor. Love you guys. Hi. Um, thanks so much, Halcyon, and all those panelists. Uh, if you guys want to give applause or snaps your fingers or uh, just appreciation in the chat, that would be fantastic.